Welcome to Hack Your Health with Dr. Nat, a transformative live stream TV show that brings wellness within everyone's reach. Each episode featuring expert guests delves into crucial topics like hormonal health, effective detoxification, and stress management through nervous system optimization. Gain practical insights into nutrition, supplementation, efficient workouts, and biohacking tools to enhance mental and physical health. So now, please welcome the host of Hack Your Health, Dr. Nat. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show Hack Your Health with Dr. Nat. I am your host, Dr. Natalie Bosha. My aim for this show is to bring you interesting topics and guests. It is to give you tips, tools, and strategies so you can better your health. And the topic today is an interesting one. It is all about how to navigate EMF hazard in our digital world. So today uh, with my guest, um, Laura Kisman. Hi, Laura. How are you? Hi, good. I'm, I'm well. How are you? Good. We'll do a, a proper introduction. But what we're going to cover today is I want us to create awareness and make us think because EMFs, you know, we hear about it, but we don't see them. And it's it's kind of an abstract thing. So today I really want us to understand EMF and the impact that it has on our health. We're going to talk about how we can measure and detect them. And then we also want to leave you with, uh, with strategies that you can um, implement in your life to try to uh, mitigate those EMF as well. So Laura, I'm super excited for our conversation. So I've met Laura a few years ago and we ended up having so much in common from, you know, uh, same schools uh, way back in, in uh, Kingston, Ontario. Uh, so I'm going to go over Laura's bio here. But uh, Laura is a quantum holistic nutritionist. Um, she runs Laura Kisman's Wellness that involves coaching. She does it live or virtual. She um, tests home for electromagnetic pollution. And that's what we're going to talk about. And I like the fact that Laura says that she's Definitely not a building biologist, but she is an EMF mitigator. So I've had her come to my house to look at um, electromagnetic field into our house. Uh, Laura's got a whole bunch of different qualification. And uh, lately, uh, and congratulations on that, she is now a brand new classical homeopath. Uh, so just adding to your arsenal of tools to help people. She's also a quantum coach uh, and, you know, has tons of tools to help her clients. So, Laura, we have a lot of stuff to cover today. And like I was saying to the people watching, please don't, you know, when, once we're done tonight, go, oh, my God, we're all doomed because this is not the purpose of the show. But the purpose is to make us think, because like I said, EMFs, we don't see them. We often don't even know what they do to our health and it's everywhere. So it's about creating awareness. And the more we know, then the more we can, um, you know, understand. So as I said, Laura, we have a lot of stuff to cover, but let's start with the basics. So what are EMF? And let's talk about the difference between ionizing, non-ionizing, natural versus non-native. And for that, uh, let's bring a visual because it can be a little bit complex. So let's look at that slide, Laura, and you can explain to us um, the different types. Okay. Um, yeah, this it's funny because I think this is like the toughest question of all right at the beginning. So I actually have some notes I'm going to refer to to help us get through this tough question. Um, so electric EMF stands for electric and magnetic fields, okay? And it's considered a form of radiation um, and in, in, in invisible as we know, right? It's an invisible area of energy um, and it's produced by electricity, okay? So there's we can classify them as to natural and not artificial or non-natural man-made. There's all different forms, but we can also call it ionizing and non-ionizing. And then we get into thermal and non-thermal so that's where it gets more complex. Um, but when we say, so I know when I write a blog or um, I'm testing people, uh, teach, teaching quantum biology or testing a home, when, I, when I, I use the term EMFs, I'm really trying to talk about 
the natural EMFs, but I really love this term non-native EMF. For, and when I write it, it's little n, two little n's and then a big e, e b, big m and big f. So non-native EMFs. So um, natural EMFs, okay, are, I'm trying to see if there's any on this slide. This is, yeah, there is. So the sunlight, obviously, the sun is a natural EMF. They're ones that have been around in our environment for millions of years, whereas the unnatural ones, I just want you to think that those are um, the man-made artificial ones that are really new in our, in our environment, okay? And they're from modern technology. And unfortunately, the negative EMFs are causing kind of chaos in our biology, so we'll talk a little bit more about that tonight. The man-made EMFs um, are, so let's get back, sorry, we'll get back to that slide the ionizing and the non-ionizing, okay? And ionizing, let me look at the slide, because it's, um, yeah, it's on the right side, you see the blue arrow. Um, those are more the high, what we call high frequency, um, very short wavelength. If you go to the bottom, you'll see it, there's a, like a wave along the screen that where it's very, very short, the, the shorter wavelengths, um, that's where you're seeing things like um, gamma rays, um, X-rays, looking at, the, you see the hand, that's the X-ray. I think that's meant to be nuclear energy uh, uh, at the top. So that's all forms of ionizing really high frequency um, dangerous, right? We know there's a harm with that. And what ionizing means is, I don't know if you can remember back to grade, you know, um, grade, probably grade eight chemistry is it's where it's the ability um, for this radiation to detach an electron from the, from an atom. So so just by definition of that, that's not good, right? That's, we know that that's gonna be dangerous. Um, like an X, we don't wanna have too many X-rays. So the non-ionizing radiation, it doesn't have, it's not high enough energy to detach an electron off of an atom. So we have forever just thought, well, it's safe. It, 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 it's not strong enough, right? It doesn't have the energy that, that, you know, the horrible things that happened in World War II with Nagasaki and, um Hiroshima right that, that was nuclear that was or atomic right um so we all we just have always assumed that all this other stuff on the left side of the screen the red arrow um is safe but we're finding out more that it's 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 not as safe um and so we want to minimize that and that's really probably the biggest message tonight that you'll you'll hear but some more examples, because there's a few in those pictures. Um, you see radar, I think, there. Mm -hmm. um, you see a cell phone. I think it's. I think that's a cell phone looking at a map, um, a TV, and um, a microwave. I think it's meant to be a microwave tower on the left, uh, a radio, and then a microwave oven. Those are all some non-ionizing. Um, just uh, computers. I'll throw in there smart meters cell phones, Bluetooth devices, um, things like MRIs, um, hair dryers, electric blankets, and yeah, metal detectors, that's another one, airport screening, are non-ionizing. And then your ionizing, let me see if there's any more I wanted to share with you. Um, just, okay, so ionizing, remember I said there's natural and, and non-natural. Not, not um, in the natural, We've got sunlight, which I mentioned, but there's also um, from the earth, from the magnetic field of the earth, and it, it's radiation coming off of the soil and, and rocks. Um, and then there's cosmic radiation from space. And so those are all natural, but they're actually all ionizing. So there can be a danger if you spend too much time in the sun, right? Mm -hmm. And then on just the last little piece on that, um, for artificial sources, the, um, some of them are... Uh, um, yeah, so then we get into airports. Uh, some of this, I think I just mentioned something at the airport, but some of those scanners are ionizing, the, you know, the stuff we put our, our bay, like our baggage. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and I know myself, I actually always ask for a pat down um, mm -hmm. because the, 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 they've changed. There's some newer ones and they're meant to be a 5G type technology. So I would ask your listeners if they're, if they're worried about this, just, just ask for a pat down. And if they ask you why, they often will ask you if you have a pacemaker, um, but you can just say I'm sensitive. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. electrosensitive. Yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah. Go ahead, Laura. Oh, just the last one was um, some one that we don't think about um, is for the for the 
ionizing is um, mammography getting, you know, but we don't want to do those too, too much, right? We don't want to CT scanners, things like that. There's some, you know, there's some medical things. Yeah. Yes, it's important to, to get checked, but just an x-rays, we just don't want to do them too much. Yeah. Don't make them so any if you were to recap that slide, ionizing, not good, non-ionizing. We thought they were safe. We are starting to see that they may not be safe, correct? Exactly. And it's, it's also, um, it's more of a latent, uh, yes. It can take 10 years of overdoing non-ionizing before you see it in effect, whereas we know ionizing would be, you know, yeah. a minute yeah. with an x-ray is too long, right? Yeah. yeah. So I guess next step, and, and we can uh, uh, remove the visual for now, but could you highlight what uh, you consider to be the most prevalent and concerning when it comes to EMF? Because now that we cover the basic, what do you worry about when you evaluate, um, you know, people's house and have a conversation uh, with them? Uh, well, I go through basically all the different fields, um, but one of them that you might not expect, uh, which is an EMF, and I, I just want to clarify this, it's the, the one visible EMF, um, as I said, it, they were all invisible, but the one visible EMF is actually blue light. So I'll just share that. Natalie and I are both breaking our own rules tonight. Where yeah, we have so talking about that, I'm going to put my glasses for a second. So, because oh. of the blue light at this time of night, Laura is wearing hers, and I feel like I I uh, should be wearing mine uh, as well. But the whole point is that in you know I talk about that in in one of my book that you know we want to follow our circadian rhythm, and at this time of night before we go to bed in, in an hour or two, we should not be bombarding ourselves with, with light, but I'll let you continue on that, Laura. So, yeah, so blue light is, I think before this newest generation, uh, we call five, fifth generation 5G technology, we blue light was probably the most dangerous of the EMFs and people, not, people don't really realize that. Um, and so, yeah, very important. I'm, I actually have, when I go to a home, I bring, I'd love to have a spectrometer. I don't have one yet. They're they're quite pricey. Um, so that's something you could put up to a light and you'd see how much blue um, you could test all your lights. But what I do have is I just I'll just show it for fun. But it's a it's a little light noise meter. Um, yeah. Yeah. And uh, so I can I can I, I can't really do it. But we will see. But um, it, it makes a noise and it shows me um, you can hear. Does this light it does it does it make a noise that the body doesn't like, or is it very common to the body? And it's really obvious when you test an LED light versus an incandescent, for example. Yeah, yeah and incandescent is quite nice. And yeah, it, yeah. So, um, so first thing, yeah, blue light. Um, th that's most prevalent and concerning. Um, and then I would go probably next to our what we call radio frequency RF. This mm -hmm. is the wireless. Um, so this is cell phones, cell towers, all these things. Um, I have different meters for that, and then. Um, magnetic fields and electric fields, um, and then something called dirty electricity. So, but I think if, if you would like, I can give you a little more detail on each and break it down. Yeah, please, please, let's oh. let's dig deeper. Okay, so so let's do RF to start because that's that's really what most people think about, you know. And they're when someone wants me to test their home, it's often they're curious because they live near a cell tower and they're like, okay, test my home. Is it safe to live here, right? Um, and so. So cell phones, just examples of our cell, but I mean, not a, so cell phones, routers, really important. Um, that's your Wi-Fi. That's if people aren't familiar, that is the piece of equipment that, that produces the Wi-Fi signal in the home. Um, Bluetooth, um, especially wireless speakers. I, I often like to, to use my meter to show people, wow, how, how high is that um, that you have sitting in your kitchen? all the time playing music all the time. Well, maybe you could put it a little farther away, you know, and distance yourself. Um, AirPods, I test, baby monitors, um, cell towers. I can't, it's tough to test that. Um, I actually use an app to actually, that I will download um, on the spot in someone's home to just show them, okay, what does it actually show? And it's really, it's looking at the distance and it'll show how many, if there's 3G, 4G, 5G. I haven't seen a 5G one yet, but. Um, and then I also test microwave ovens. That's all this non, all those are the non, non ionizing, right? And then 
Uh, magnetic fields. Um, if someone lives near a power line, that's really concerning. That's going to have the same thing for electric fields. And then, then um, just electrical appliances. We'll, we'll test. We don't have all the time to test. It depends how much time people have, but we'll look at all of those. And um, just like simple thing is your your dishwasher's on. Well, are you? Do you have your cutting board right? You know, there on the counter, maybe. You want to just if you know if it's always on at dinner time when you're cutting your vegetables for for dinner, maybe you could move that you know you could move your cutting board somewhere else. So you just a little distancing from that field. So, um, and then uh, dirty electricity is one that people might not may not have heard of. That has another term called um, EMI. What does it stand for? Is the question um, electric electromagnetic interference? I think is what, mm -hmm. what it is. And basically, um, I have a little meter here I can show you. It's called a microsurge meter right here. You plug it in and into the wall. You, you plug it into the outlets. Let's see. It's got the little the cord there. Um, and you plug it into the outlets and you'll, you'll be able to find there's a sort of a, a number will come up. And ideally, you want it to be under 50. If you're electro hypersensitive, you need it to be under 30. But a lot of homes are... Uh, they, they really range for all different numbers. But anyway, this, what it is, it's, and it's an invisible, um, they're micro surges. Um, and that's actually quite, they consider it da dangerous. A radio, it's RF, radio frequency, radiation. Um, and some, like a lot, of, a lot of X, I should say some, but in, in sort of this space, feel that it's one of the most biologically active. So we want to get that down. And it's actually quite easy to, um, to get it down. And um, and it rides on, I'm just reading this because I want to get the wording right. It rides along a building's electrical system with the ability to contaminate an entire home and even buildings and homes nearby. So that's something that I better measure for. So those are, those are the biggies. Yeah. And then that leads me to the next question. What are some of the symptoms that people can experience? Because, you know, there, there's things that, you know, from not being able to sleep well, fatigue, headaches, brain fog. But those are symptoms that can be of so many other things. And then you mentioned uh, the electrosensitivity that some people are way more sensitive and they already, some people already know because they connected the dots, but some people are just still trying to figure out what is going on with them because of uh, symptoms of, of fatigue and so forth, right? And just all of those. Do you mind elaborating on those symptoms and what you've seen? Okay. Um, yeah, I've seen I've seen a, quite a bit. I'll just share that I was in a group. I still am in a group, uh, a, a safe technology group. Uh, in our, we created it. I was part of a group that created this um, when five G was coming in, and we were all very concerned. I would say we're not as busy with our, we kind of all went back to our jobs after COVID and we've lost some momentum. We're trying to meet once a month um, with this particular group, but it was amazing to me to meet um, quite a number of these electro hypersensitive people. We had one girl that would, would, would sit in her tent. Another girl was in a car. Um, a lot of them can't live in a home. Um, you can actually get to that point and it's, it's so sad really. Um, but one concept before I give you some of the symptoms and you've mentioned a bunch, so I'm glad you're so aware, Natalie, um, just a concept that to grasp is that electro pollution, I'm going to read it. Electro pollution clouds up electrical communication in the body. Um, and this has been known to cause serious health issues ranging from diabetes to cancer. And if I can go back to your first question with what is EM natural EMFs and non-natural EMFs, the way I've been explaining it to people in such, I, to me, this is like the simplest way is that we have all this communication going on in our body and we actually get a lot of messages um, from those natural EMFs from the sun. You know, you mentioned circadian biology, right? There's just ongoing second to second all day long information coming at us. Um, and it comes from the ground when we, when we earth and we ground and, um, and a lot of that is driving everything in our body, all the, the biochemistry, let's say, the biophysics and the biochemistry. And now you enter in all these non-native EMFs that are crazy frequencies and power densities. And and the I, I just feel like it's, it's um, oh, so I don't know, 
I went, I was in the military, you know that, and I was in telecommunications. Yeah. And we learned all about jamming. And I, I guess for me, maybe that's why this, this concept seems so simple to me, but it's like all that, all that non-native stuff, all this chaotic and, and it's different. I mean, so many different signals are all coming in at different times and pulsing and, and it's jamming our communication that we need. And, that's, and a, that's a very good way to, to, to explain it. And, you know, I was reading a, a an article just this morning and I pulled it out because I think it's important. Research uh, is showing that um, harmful biological effect of radio frequency on human and the environment and can increase the risk of cancer, uh, neurological damage, uh, development of the brain, uh, dementia. Uh, you know, there's a lot of neurological diseases um, you know, affecting the blood brain barrier, the communication and so forth. So it's just, there's a lot out there, but we don't hear about it uh, too much. So 5G increases permeability of the blood brain barrier, neuro, neurogenesis uh, causes neural uh, DNA damage, uh, anxiety also, and dementia. Like th these are like recent studies that have been done, unfortunately, it's not talked about much, and I'm sure we're going to discuss that um, a little bit further, but it, it's having this awareness that it can affect our biology. I saw I saw um, an article on that as well, and I was, I was super excited to see that come out because there were, there were 10 studies done in the last two years since 5G has been rolled out. And it, I mean, excited, but, you know, sad too, but it's those studies and the awareness that will yeah. bring change, right? So... Um, so, okay. So some of the symptoms I think you mentioned already, I'll just yeah. call it some symptoms and then I'll, I'll break down some harm, more harmful things. Yeah. So some initial symptoms could be, I think, you, I don't know if you said insomnia, but insomnia, yeah. fatigue is a really common one. Um, headaches, very common. And another one, I don't know if you've ever felt it, but I have is brain fog. Um, and you can get brain fog from, a, you know, bloating in your stomach. So it's, it can be so confusing, you know, what causes brain fog, but there are people that the minute they, they get in, in, in whatever, it could be Bluetooth for one person. It could be wire. It could be a cell phone radiation. It could be, um, dirty electricity for another, then mm -hmm. yeah, they'll get, they'll experience brain fog. They just can't, can't find words. And, um, and of course it could be menopause, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> um, but memory problems, yeah, really uh, is a big piece. Anxiety, depression, um, again, sort of neurological uh, neuropathy kind of going along with that where we can't, you know, we're, we're having either numbness and tingling and or not feeling, mm -hmm. you know, our, our extremities. Um, heart palpitations. So people, again, kind of goes along with the anxiety because usually one leads to the other. Um, and then another really common one is this ringing and it can be just one ear. Yeah. Um, and it's called tinnitus or tinnitus, mm -hmm. uh, very common and very common with electro hypersensitive people. Um, uh, and then dizziness, it could be just a short term thing, but the, the more longer term harmful, um, effects of, of electromagnetic radiation would be, um, obviously cancer, you know, we, 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 we've, there's rat studies, there's mice studies. Um, and then obviously looking at meta analysis of, of what's gone on with humans and um, definitely brain tumors. So the, the, the most famous one of all, the glio, uh, GBM, we call it glioblastoma. Um, mm -hmm. um, and then other, you know, then they, they've, they're connecting, I'm not saying all breast cancers, but wearing yourself, you know, wearing a bra or whatever, sports bra and putting your cell phone on their breast. Um, and the same thing with men, you know, are putting their cell phone in the pockets and it's very close to their re reproductive organs. So you know, more linking, I think, testicular uh, cancer. And then the, the newest one and most concerning um, is because it's we're seeing it a lot more in um, our youth, like I'm saying youth, like teenage, mm -hmm. 20, is colorectal, which again is where are they putting their, that's the question, where are they putting their, their cell phones? So, um, but infertility, another one, very, very common. Um, and there are studies really to back that one up. They, they can, they've looked at sperm every, every which way. So definitely on the male side, they, they can see that. Um, and then just thy low thyroid, like, you know, um, 
hypothyroid, we're definitely linking um, lower, so sleep issues, lower melatonin, um, and that, you know, we can, and sort of, um, we can see that with cortisol, it affecting cortisol, um, all the different EMFs like blue light are included. And then testosterone production, which men are really, really want to hang on to. And, um, and it's really, it is really interesting to look at our youth today. We're seeing um, a rise in um, male pattern baldness, baldness with young men. We're seeing myopia, that's another one, with blue, definitely blue light. Um, there's countries like, I don't quote me, because I don't know if it's Japan or Korea. I think it's Korea because my husband was recently there. They're all in glasses. That that young generation is are and they've all they're all getting because they're like this all yeah. the time. And it's it's partly training your eye to only see things up close, but it's yeah. also you can't see far away. But they actually think it's more the damage to the photoreceptors in the eye um, from the blue light. So, yeah. um, and the only last one on this, um, I mean, there's so much you can look at heart disease, um, people that have worn, you know, are people getting um, arrhythmias from wearing their cell phone in a in like a suit, the jacket, you know, we're starting to look at that. And, but another one concerning one is, is um, the whole spectrum of autism and the rise in autism and, and maybe yeah. starting to link and, there. But, that yeah. brings me to the next question, who's at risk? And I know, you know, we've discussed that with, with kids and, and children and so forth. So just elaborate briefly on who is more at, I mean, we're all at risk really, but who is more at risk? Yeah, so most concerning, like if I was gonna prioritize, I would say um, fetuses in, in, a, in a mom, you know, pregnant mom's belly. Um, you just can't be too careful of, of having, um, you know, having cell phones around, you know, they're in China, I think, they have a law, you have to wear a belly band. I, I, I've not, you know, I've heard this, I haven't gone to China and, and seen myself. Um, but yeah, they're, you, you can't be too careful. That that belly wants infrared. It wants to be out in the sun and getting mm -hmm. natural infrared. Um, and uh, so, yeah, and then children, of course, right? Um, and women. And where I would put all three of those together is that they all have, um, thinner skulls, so the, the actual bone is thinner, so the radiation can get through, and they have smaller heads, women included, um, and so the radiation is shorter distance to get closer to the middle of the brain, and then, um, yeah, that's where the, some of those cancers concerns, you know, I would say the, the most studies have been with looking at brain cancer specifically, um, and also children and fetuses obviously are way more hydrated. Um, as you get older, you get more dehydrated and that hydration has a factor in how, how that radiation can get through. And another thing is just young people. Um, I think it's men until 28 and women until 25. You just being a chiropractor, you know, all about this way more than I ever will. Um, the whole myelination of the nerves and then being unmyelinated that their, their nerves are more at risk. So there's yeah, their central nervous system is more at risk. So, so that that top of the list. Um, then I would say I would add to that um, people with any kind of limbic or vagal nerve um, dysfunction or inflammation. And so those people are people that maybe have been diagnosed with Lyme or mold um, issues with mold toxicity. And even we're we're finding out apparently there's a link with post COVID because um, they're yeah there's they've got issues with the vagal nerve and limbic system. Um, and then anybody that you know that's hypersensitive, um, and I've I've been in that category. I'm thankfully much better now. But um, yeah, people that are, have, have sensitivities, a ton of sensitivities to food or chemicals, they can't be around perfume or smoke or things like that. Um, so they they have that inflammation going on. So they're going to be more likely to be sensitive to electromagnetic radiation. And then someone again to again in your probably you've dealt with a lot more than I have is people with concussions and traumatic brain injuries. Yeah. They so back to what you said earlier about the blood brain barrier. Yeah. A concussion will, as you know, open the blood blood brain barrier, but also non-negative EMFs open the, the can open the blood brain barrier. So one of the first things I tell someone with a concussion is, okay, turn off your Wi-Fi at night. Get, you know, make sure you're getting that restful time. If you can get it off all the time, that'd be wonderful while you're, you know, in that intense healing phase. So, um, and then just the elderly, the elderly and the sick, they've got depressed immune systems. Um, and also just 
there's a term called redox. I won't get into the details of that, but um, they would have lowered redox. They're, yeah, they're getting at the end stage of their life and that there's something called redox that goes down as you get older yeah. and just, you know has an impact. Laura, we're going to take a quick pause. And when we come back, let's talk about uh, more in detail, you know, how we can test and then solutions, because we've talked a lot about what EMFs are, the symptoms, but I really want to give people actionable items. So we'll be right back. Sounds good. <laughs> In today's world, the flood of health information feels endless, but amidst the noise, two experts with over 50 years of combined clinical experience come together to help you with smart cuts, biohack your health span, cutting edge protocols for greater energy and performance. Dr. Paul Sly, a beacon for athletes, weekend warriors, and those seeking to elevate their potential. And Dr. Natalie Beauchamp, renowned for empowering individuals in their health journeys. Together, They've produced the book, Smart Cuts, Biohack Your Health Span, a protocol-based treasure trove packed with actionable steps. Journey through five transformative sections. Dive into sleep, hydration, movement, brain health, and even the secrets of longevity. Guided by their expert hands, unleash the best version of yourself. With over half a century of clinical wisdom and innovative protocols, reclaim your health and redefine your limits. Are you ready to embark on this transformative journey? Smart Cuts, available now. And we are back uh, with Dr. Natalie Beauchamp and Hack Your Health with Dr. Nat. We are talking with our guest today, Laura Kisman, about how to navigate EMFs and in our digital world, and let's face it, we're bombarded by it. So Laura, we explain what they were, we explain symptoms, and I think we've made people aware. Now, how can one go about measuring what's going on in our homes? I know you show you know, some of the meters, but let's, let's talk about uh, what's available to people to um, start measuring their EMF. Okay. Well, first I got to put a plug in for getting it professionally done. Mm -hmm. um, if you have a building biologist in, in your city, um, they're not that common. That's the frustrating part because um, it takes a, a lot to, to train to be one. Um, I would love to be one. It's on the list of, you know, things before I die I'd like to do, um, but it's, it hasn't happened yet. So um, yeah, try and get a professional if, if that's the best, they know, they know more than I do. Um, I don't even know what I don't know. You know, I do know a lot that I don't know that they know, but um, definitely if you can get a building biologist. Um, and to find one, just go on the building, BBI, Building Bi Biology Institute, and you should be able to find one in your area. area. Um, but otherwise, an EMF mitigator like, like myself, someone who's taken some courses, uh, and, I, and this really came to me by accident. I. I'm a holistic nutritionist in my background, and I would I just started to link this that you know what if they're not getting well, having the perfect diet, what else could there be, right? Um, and and so I started testing their homes. So I, I had like one or two meters, and then it became three meters and four meters, and and uh, and of course looking at my own health as well. So. Um, so there's a, a number of different meters. I'll just show a few, but so from the RF perspective um i just happen to have the safe and sound pro 2 absolutely love it um the reason i actually got this meter was because i got asked um or i volunteered to be part of a global um study where we test different towns um we do different projects and so it's dr magda havas's project and this this was the meter that she prefers ironically it's actually canadian and it comes out of uh, guelph safe living technologies and what i love about it is you can actually hear um you can hear the sound, you can put on full volume. And when you're with the client and you're trying to show them, okay, I really think that you need to move this router farther away from your computer. When you put that noise on, they, they go, oh my God, is that, that's what my cells, that's, that's what my cells feel or hear. Yeah. And it's, it's so jar. Some of the sounds are very disturbing and jarring. So, so that's an RF meter. Okay. Um, then, oh, it's actually on by accident here. I'll turn it off. Um, I use one meter for electric and magnetic fields, and this one comes from Germany. It's a gigahertz. 
I, I highly recommend this one. It's, it's yeah, both of these are, are really good, um, highly esteemed. And then I use, for the dirty electricity, I already showed you, I use the micro surge meter. And then if, what's it's kind of fun, because it's a little bit of play, but if we do get a, a number that we're not happy with, then I've got a number of these, what they're called stetsorizers, so they're very, yeah, stetsorizers that you would plug in the wall and just see, can I bring it down? Is it, you know, is it in, is it on this circuit? And you play around and you're, you're trying to figure out also, is this, is the source of it coming from the, the, the power lines outside the house coming in the house or is the source of it in the house? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and I've had some, we've, it's been very enlightening um, playing around with these and then unplugging things. And then, yeah, show you the light meter. Um, let me think of what am I missing here? Yeah, that's so that would be um, that. And then, oh, I'll show you my favorite toy, which I'm wearing right now, which it's a uh, it's actually got a it's a safe. It's, it's also based on the safe and sound pro this technology. Very, very similar. OK, as this. But um, it's just a little micro one. So it's it's not giving me digitally the what the radiation is but i can program it to vibrate at a certain level so i usually program it to know when i'm in 100,000 microwatts per square meter which is an extreme value and um but also at any time i can press it i don't know if it'll show through this can you, let's see here. okay uh can you that uh, sorry it'll only show for a second do you yeah. see a flash light yes okay, so yeah. Okay, so it was green for a second, then it went, it's probably because I'm getting closer to the computer, but I'm, I'm actually, oh, see, it's gone green here. So I've got my house in my office to a point where it's at a, at a lower level, which is nice. So um, the other thing is I always, sounds really simple, but if anybody's trying to do this and learn this, um, I always have my little handy, um, it's like my legend, and it shows me what the guidelines for the building biology. So what is severe? What is, what is mm. safe? What is extreme? Um, yeah, so or what and what is slight, so I'm not really too worried about it. So that's super helpful. Um, yeah, so so let's talk about solutions now. So I know you know we could probably talk for two hours with the amount yeah. of information, but we have already, right at your home, we might have to do part two. But basically, I know you know you talk about the the 3D system, uh, from um, to professional to prioritize downtime duration and distance. So let's talk about that. And then let's give people practical solutions. Okay. Um, so, um, yeah, I was just thinking, of something. okay. Um, okay. So some practice, so through, so 3d it's uh, Nick Pino. He's Canadian from Montreal. Just love, love Nick. He's brought so much awareness, um, to all of this this whole subject um great book he's written called the non-tinfoil guide to emfs probably have mm -hmm. um and really at the for a basic person wanting to learn i think it's one of the best books actually um but anyway so he and someone called brian hoyer who's also a like a holistic nutritionist like i am who switched and went full-time into um testing homes and now he has his own beautiful um company that sells shielding products um, they, they taught me my course and they continue to teach me. I go once, I have once a month training with them and they're, I think it's their system. Maybe it's from someone else, but they, they really focus on it and teach everybody Th the 3d system, which is, um, the three D stand for, like you said, downtime, duration, and distance. So downtime is really just how can you look at your life and get downtime from your cell phone, for example, or your, or your router. The router is simple, turn it off at night. That's an easy one, right? Um, the cell phone is, you know, when you go on, um, like when you when you go to the store, take a break from it, maybe try, I know we all do that. I know you're looking for your wallet and you're looking for your cell phone when you leave the house, but down, try to take breaks, go. Maybe when you're walking to the park, leave your phone at home. You don't have to have a picture of everything, which I, I know, I, I know I'm very guilty of. So um, during sleep, is a big one. Um, sleep is the most important. It's also the, when I test homes, it's the most important room to get right because that's where we rest and rejuvenate. And so, um, yeah, leave your, if you can leave your cell phone out of the room, um, if it has to be in the room, you know, airplane mode, you know, try and get another type of, like, I just use my, I have a, just a basic old, we've got it here to show you, but just a Timex watch. That's, that's what I used to wake up with. I don't use my cell phone. So, mm -hmm. 
And so, yeah, during another one is during meals. We have a rule at our house, no cell phones at the table. Um, and so what? I have my handy watch so nobody can cheat because my, my arm starts vibrating at the dinner table otherwise. Um, and just, yeah, airplane mode. Um, really try to get into that parasympathetic mode more often than the sympathetic because the sympathetic, the stress, the, the fight or flight, um, we get that from non-native EMFs. It's raising our cortisol. So when people talk about doing digital detoxes, it's a wonderful idea really to think about and practice. So duration, that means just um, less time on the devices. So if you're gonna make a cell phone call, try and make it shorter, you know, just a quick call. See if you could maybe text um, or on even better do it on, send it on if you're in messenger on your computer or on Instagram on your computer as to doing everything on, on the phone. Um, I had I read this summer that men um, are, are more guilty than women. I they're on they're on their phones like eighteen hours a day, which is interesting. I'm not sure why, but um, yeah. Okay, and then the last one I'm just gonna get because I had an idea for you. Um, distance is just get the phone farther away. So speaker phone versus at the ear. Really, really try never to ever use that. And please, if you ever see a child or a baby. Remember the whole, what I told you about distance, just please try to teach them, teach them parents, um, especially if you're grandparents, you know. Um, another way you can get farther away is wearing wired earphones. Um, so Natalie yeah. has heard. I yeah. can, can show mine. So these are tubes uh, earphones. So instead of, uh, uh, see here's, you can see here, but it's a tube. So. Uh, I can't get phone calls with them, but if I'm listening to music or things and, you know, the awareness of the um, uh, wireless pods, I'm sure you've tested them and the frequency is, is really high. It's right beside our brain. So I have conversation all the time with patients that come in with it. And then, as you mentioned, for us ladies wearing our phone, like some uh, put them on their breast or in their front pocket or back pocket and same thing for the gentleman so uh, the distance aspect is 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 key so, with with that right i recently got i i've been using these for years and years and i've recently got a new pair that actually the the wire is shielded because apparently they're, oh. they're perfect um because there is some resonance that comes up through the wire and as you said like there's these ferrite beads and then it changes this into the sound it's it's sound and it's just air the signal goes through air but um yeah. what I will, you can actually take a call uh, like you can you can actually talk on the phone w with them as long as your phone's of course not on airplane mode right yeah yeah, yeah. So listening to podcasts if you're like me i'm a podcast junkie download the podcast um yeah. you know and that way you can listen and listen if you have to if, you know like i will cook meals and I'll, you know if there's other people in the room i don't want to disturb them i'll, I'll put these on or i vacuum often with these yeah. uh listening to the podcast yeah. So if we kind of recap our advice here, so get an expert to test if you can consider purchasing meters. I know myself, I purchased one and you came to my house because I, I needed help to try to figure out how it worked. Um, assess where your worst offenders are. So you've mentioned a router. Uh, this is something that you can even put in a cage, you know, to decrease it and turn it off at night and the smart meters as well. So do you want to talk a little bit more about the smart meters? Yeah. And if, if you want, I can tell some case studies Would that help. Cause I have it yeah, shortly because I, you know, we, uh, okay, we I, have 15 yeah. minutes left and I, I want to make sure that we're, we're giving people action items. So yeah, yes. So Okay, I was thinking that might bring, bring it to life a bit, but um, with the okay, so router, I you definitely want to get farther away. You can do a router cover, um, but just know that the router cover will diminish where how far the signal will go. So I, I have one. We had to actually take it off because the signal wasn't enough for our kids' bedrooms. Um, so that was interesting. But my dad, um, he's he his is in his living room. So it's been it's perfect. We put his on and it's cut the radiation dramatically for him. Um, so yeah, super handy. Smart meter covers, they're, di they're tricky. I would get someone involved to test because the, just in my training, even this last week, the problem with um, 
putting the cover on the out because they're outside of our houses, right? And you put the cover on, what we don't realize about those is 80%, I think the radiation is actually going outwards. Mm-hmm. Um, and so if you cover the outside, you're forcing that radiation in the house. So the best time to use a router cover would be if you have a neighbor who is is facing, and they don't care, and it's facing your house and you're electro-hypersensitive, you might have to ask that neighbor to, put, to use a, a, mm. a cover. Um, and better yet would be putting um, tin foil, <laughs> sounds funny, but tin foil on the wall, inside wall, in case if that's a bedroom, for example. Yeah. Um, yeah um, and another one that we talked about is wire computer, and this is something that even... Yes. Uh, my uh, plug for my um, my laptop, uh, I didn't have three prongs. It was not grounded properly, so for sure. And then trying to be um, wired. So like for instance, right now, I am fully wired with uh, the internet just to make sure that everything is, you know, uh, is, is diminished with the wireless frequencies, right? Oh, yeah, that, that is so such a great fix. Um, is to to try and hardwire as many of your devices as you can. Um, my, my PC here is hardwired. But the thing, just a note, Natalie, with laptops to mention to people, if they do that, don't forget that you have to actually go into your laptop and put your laptop in airplane mode because mm-hmm. otherwise, it's, yes, it's hooked to the Wi-Fi, but it's still radiating, but it will stop that radiation. And, yeah, I, I often see 10,000, 11,000 microwatts per square meter from a laptop. Uh, not as like just in terms to give people a reference, a router is like eight hundred thousand. It's wow. horrific. So to me, priority in the house, the for very first thing I look at is okay, uh, like when I walk, I want to know where the router is, um, mm. because that is is it's just such a high power density. Um, for some people, it's the smart meter, which is not really a high power density, but it's this very unusual pulsing every 30 seconds 60 seconds that has has made some people electro hypersensitive um yeah those are two really big ones yeah and there's timers that you can put on your router to say okay we're not turning it on from 10 to to 6. they're a bit tricky i have to say we've had some challenges with ours but you know it's it's well worth the uh you know the, the the complexity of it and then you mentioned that earlier too using airplane mode as much as uh, possible you know even for for sleep i always say no electronics in the bedroom no tv you know it's easy to bring the laptop it's easy to bring the ipad and if you do then you know we want to wear the red light to yeah. you know, to really yeah. get uh, dark at night uh, but and again just even for your alarm clock i leave my cell phone uh in the bathroom which is way yeah. further some people like at some point i know i bought an old clock you know just just uh just to go back to basic to not have too too much um into our our homes and then i know one thing that you've told me as well that you've suggested to some of your clients to turn the circuit breaker off your bedroom altogether. And I know there's a few practitioners that have mentioned that uh, as well. And you can get a kill switch to do that, to make it even easier so that you're not running down every night and turning it off, um, which isn't actually great for your circuit breaker. Um, yeah. And that's something you need an electrician to, to, uh, to usually it's, I would highly advise you get an electrician to actually Put that in or or a building biologist if they're trained to do it I, i'm not i'll just be able to educate people one thing natalie um i see you with your hand and i me too we have both wear aura rings yes um, that, i was gonna just say that if people do sleep with a cell phone you know in in the room um these all these different pulsating you might actually see a difference um in some of your you know some of the the readings specifically the probably the hrv um yeah you may say an imp- improvement in HRV. I don't, I can't say for sure it would, would affect, I think it's very individual, whether or not um, somebody sleeping with the Wi-Fi, it would affect their deep sleep or their REM sleep. But I just, and then I just wanted to say, remember to take your, um, your or ring and t- put the Bluetooth off before exactly. you put- Exactly, exactly. Okay. Especially the, the newer one, I find that uh, with the pulse oximeter and, you know, it just, it's, it's, uh, yeah, we, we want to minimize it on us um, as well. So um, I know, Laura, when you came to our house, like we went from one room to the other, you had me sleep on my bed, we tested a few things. 
uh, one of the things that I ended up doing is pushing my bed away from the wall because going closer to the wall, uh, we were reading more frequency. We even went in the sauna to check the electromagnetic field as well. So, um, and again, I'm, I'm not, you know, trying to plug Laura's services to do that, but depending where you live, you may not have access to a person like this, but it is, it was truly fascinating to see. And we're constantly, uh, you know, bettering our, ourselves. And I was just in, in uh, New York City in February to a um, functional medicine conference. And one of the speaker had a whole presentation on house pollution and, you know, the, the carpets and the air and, you know, the emanation of, you know, uh, fire, fire retardant material and all of this. So we have to remember that our home is supposed to be our sanctuary and we want to make it as healthy as possible. So uh, water quality, air quality, but then EMF. And I started the show saying we don't see them. So we're not thinking about it. And I love technology as, as much as the next person, but to what cost? And I think we have to be aware that some research are done, but they're not, there's not enough. And I read on an article um, the other day that made me think, you know, I used to say sitting is the new smoking, but I think 5G is the cigarette of the 21st century. And oh, I think I that. That, that, I've never heard it before. And I'm like, wow, I, I can really think because we have we have ideas already of the effect of 4Gs on the body. There's research, you know, of the fact that it it is classed a certain way and carcinogenic and so forth. But 5Gs, we don't have, you know, the data. And yet we're putting towers everywhere. And the towers have to be closer together because it doesn't penetrate into walls to get into, you know, the homes and things like that. So there's a lot of stuff that we're doing without having the proper information, unfortunately. And let's face it, get politics here, but it is not the telecommunication companies that are going to want to do the, the study to, to, you know, to show that their product is, is harmful. So as a cus customer or consumer, we have to be very aware of this. So we've given you some tools and, and strategies, you know, like I said at the beginning, I didn't want to overwhelm people, but I think the whole purpose of the show tonight is to make you think. Now, Laura, you know, we could talk about this, like I said, for probably another hour. But one thing that I want to bring to our awareness is that there are uh, devices called modulators, some are blockers, some are harmonizer. And I think we're both in the train of thoughts that we don't know yet how well those are working. Uh, so the modulators are uh, exactly that. They will modulate the frequency around. Some are going to block and there's Faraday cage uh, that you can purchase. Those are truly blockers. And then the harmonizer, those are the ones that you can put on your laptop or your cell phone. I'm reading about it. It sounds like some of them are promising, but I wouldn't hang my hat on that fact uh, of say, oh, I can do whatever I want. I'm going to take a call on my on my cell because I've got this because I think it truly is a, a sense of, you know, probably false security. I myself have a case for my phone. I have a case for my um, my uh, you know backpack. You know where I carry. My, my phone. I do have um, for my laptop for when I put it on my lap to have a, 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 a little there. Uh, I am using my tube, so I'm trying to do as much as I can, but it won't replace the fact, like you said, that you know we need to to decrease the time that we're spending with those and decreasing the the distance. That's that's playing playing it safe, right? You're can I give you one tip um, that yeah. I learned uh, partly in the research? Um, building up to this is, uh, so phone cases, um, I have one as well, the, they, they can be misused so easily. If you if you put them to your ear, again, the radiation could be coming out one end. Um, they can be turned the wrong way. If you have the camera, if there's a little hole for the camera, the radiation's coming through that. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I haven't used mine because I, it didn't test well, even though it came from a really reputable company. The one, what I would recommend is the pouch. 
um, shield your body has a as is probably the best one and yeah it's so simple and you can even put that in your purse instead of having to get a specific bag um, yeah. I would look at, look at that because that is the one it's not a Faraday cage it's actually allows the radiation to come off of the body out, outwards but it will stop it going on your body and I think that's a that's you know spend your money on the shielding first but when you've got that down where you've you know a, you've, you've educated yourself you know how to do airplane mode you, you, you do the 3d 3d system but shield whenever that that cell phone has to be on your body shield it so it's not it's not irradiating your hip let's say if it's on a belt um yeah and then these harmonizers there is there is some really interesting new research and you know we're seeing live blood look better um, HRV, uh, thermography, we're seeing some interesting research, but we don't know the long term. And, and, you know, what if something slightly breaks in it, and then you're thinking, oh, I'm protected, and I'm just using these devices all the time. That's where I, I worry a bit. Um, yeah. So Shiel Your Body is, is one company that has the those, and then, you know, people can do some research online. And I think you've mentioned Nick Pinot, his book. Uh, you know, once you start reading in that field, and there was the EMF Summit uh, that just finished last oh, weekend. Oh, so fabulous. It was yeah. so good. I watched almost every lecture. It was fantastic. Every, every, no, so you can educate yourself. I know I've I've done a, one of those summits a, a couple of years ago, and it's like, whoa, you know, it's it can be overwhelming. But let's hope that we do, didn't overwhelm people, but yeah. make them aware, and you know, they're gonna think twice before putting you know their their cell phone on, on themselves and and ask themselves, you know, what else could they do to limit their their, their time. Yeah. So Laura, um where can people find you, your your website? I know you give uh, courses as well on different things. Um so where where can people find you? Yeah, they can find me at laurakismanwellness.com and Kisman is with two ends as you can see behind me here. Um, and I'm also on it, uh, quite act well, I could be more active on Instagram, but uh, that's probably where I post the most, um, also Facebook, but more on Instagram. And I'm shortly going to have a podcast coming out called Quantum Healthy. And EMF will definitely, not every episode will be EMFs. It'll be uh, all about sunlight and uh, blue light and, and just optimizing our quantum biology. Um, but uh, Quantum Healthy is what it's going to be called. And just so for people, that's another resource. There are some wonderful podcasts. Um, Smarter Tech, I would recommend. Uh, there's one I just learned today, EMF Remedy, um, and Healthier Tech is another pod. So those, there's three great ones that if people want to start to learn more. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and then another book is uh, emf I know you know about it, yeah. uh, Dr. Mercola's. Yeah. Um, and, then, and then just a plug for you, your first book, uh, the chapter on EMS is excellent, Natalie. Thank you. Yeah, 2018, but you know, some some basics, uh, you know, are, are still current. And now that we've added 5G, it's you know, it's an extra layer. So, thank you, thank you so much for your time, Laura. This is always there's just always so much to learn and how much uh, you know we can do to make our homes more safe and our environment. And we didn't talk about electric cars and, and so forth, but like I said, we could probably do another, another show on that. So thank you so much uh, for your time. You so welcome. And thank you for this opportunity. I really, really appreciate it. Awesome. So this was Dr. Natalie Beauchamp, Hack Your Health with Dr. Nat. I hope we got you thinking and that you are going to change maybe one or two uh, behaviors uh, because now you have the awareness and this is what it's all about to better our health is to integrate changes slowly because if we integrate too many changes, we don't stick with the habit. So we want to slowly integrate those changes. So until next week, uh, stay well, and we will see you uh, for the next show next week. Welcome to Dr. Natalie's seven day hack your health challenge. Transform your fitness level with seven quick, do them from anywhere workouts. Look and feel great. Nutrition. Master the art of optimizing your diet and maximizing nutrient intake with daily nutrition challenges. 
biohacking, unlock exclusive content to tap into your body's innate wisdom, take on challenges to optimize your mindset and physiology. Ready to transform your health? Visit www.drnat.life to join Dr. Natalie's 7-Day Hack Your Health Challenge. Your journey begins now. This has been Hack Your Health with Dr. Nat. Tune in each week and uncover simple yet powerful strategies and actionable steps to elevate your health and wellness. Wednesdays, 8 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave TV Network.